Today we are tackling our first project in our How to Start Wood Turning lesson series by creating a mallet. Stay tuned to learn how to turn a custom mallet for your shop. Welcome to Turning Stitches, I'm Sean. We help wood turners learn the craft to begin making fun projects faster. Now that we've learned some basic shaping techniques, let's put it all together into a project that's going to be useful for your shop. If you missed Lesson 3, Turning Beads and Coves, you can find it here. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so it'll be easy to follow along with this lesson series. Mallets are great tools to have around the lathe. They can help us with center punches when we're working between centers. So let's get started creating one. Now at the end of Lesson 3, we had a little homework assignment to create a, a turning blank. So the blank I've got here is 4 inches square, 4 inches by 4 inches, and about 14 inches long. So let's get this mounted between centers and get started. So we've got our blank mounted between centers, and it's time to turn this into a cylinder just like we did in Lesson 1. Now a quick tip on a large turning blank like this, you might want to run this through your table saw with the blade beveled and just take off these corners which will just speed up the process of getting to a cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and turn it the way it is. I'm going to start the lathe at about 600 RPMs, just like lesson one, get the sharp edges off, and then I'll increase the speed. So let's get going. With our cylinder ready, let's put some measurement marks on here so we can get the shape of our mallet. So I'm just going to come in one inch from the end of the blank. You can adjust this depending on the length of your blank. From that one inch mark, I'm going to mark over a quarter inch. Now the, this second mark right here is going to, it represents the top of the mallet. So from that point, I'm going to measure down four inches. This will be the bottom of the mallet. And then I'm going to mark down here on the other end, 12 inches, which will be the end of our handle. With our measurements marked out, let's use the parting tool to establish these lines. If you're getting value out of this video so far, hit that like button. Starting down here at the top, kind of in the waist area, bottom of the mallet head, With these critical locations established, let's just start working away some of the waste material and shaping the mallet head. I'm going to start by using my bowl gouge, my half inch bowl gouge, just to remove some of the waste down here at the tailstock end. So as I'm working away this waste material, I want to leave about an inch down here at the tailstock because in a few minutes we're going to turn this around. We're going to switch this around, move this down there to that end. But I just want to establish where I want the top to be. Now I want to dome the top edge here just a little bit. So I'm going to start here at my line and just move toward this, back toward that tailstock. It's kind of like rolling a bead. I'm just going to dome that. I'm just going to round that over a little bit. I want to leave some material. With the top established, we want to start working on the shape of the mallet head. So up here at the top, I want this diameter to be about three and a half inches. So I've got my caliper set just a little wider than that. And then down here at the bottom, I want it to be about three inches. So right here, let's make this cut in here three inches so we'll know where we're going. So now we'll just use, we'll go back to our bowl gouge and we'll start removing this material till we get down to that three inch line. So we've got a lot of waste material to clear off. So let's go ahead and get that started. So I've left my three inch spot right there. I've cleared out some waste. So as we're moving this way, we don't have to worry about hitting that, that waste. Start working. We can cut this taper with our roughing gouge. And if we get our bevel riding 
like we did at the end of lesson one, we can get some pretty nice clear cuts. So the top is where I want it. It's a little under three and a half, but that's okay. So as I'm cutting my paper, I'm just not going to start at the top. Still have some room to go down here at the bottom. So we've got the top and bottom established, and here's basically our shape. We'll come back and clean this up. All right, before we flip this around, we're going to use a scraper just to clean up these tool marks. Make sure your scraper is nice and sharp. All we want to do is just kind of give it a real... Get rid of some of those radial lines. So we flipped the mallet end to end, so now we've got the head up here at the headstock, and we're going to work on the hand. So I've resharpened my half-inch bowl gouge, and I'm going to use it just like we did up here on the head just to clear off the waste material. We've got a lot of waste material here where the handle is. We want the handle to be about an inch and a half at its widest point. So I've got my calipers reset at an inch and a half. And so we'll just kind of keep working this portion down until we're at about an inch and a half. Okay, now that we've made a little progress on getting some, rid of some of this waste material, let's double check our measurements. We know we want the mallet to be basically 12 inches from top to bottom. So you can see I'm a little long down here at the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and remark where that is. Now it's down here at the bottom that I want this inch and a half diameter. So let's work down to it first and then we'll start working back this way. So here I'm just kind of finding the bottom again. That's the bottom of my handle right there. Let's get that down to an inch and a half. And we're a little below that actually. So now we really don't want to do much more than sand right there. So now we'll work off the rest of this material and kind of get it all down to basically an inch and a half. And then we'll talk about shaping the handle. So before we get too far along, let's talk about the shape of the handle. Now I like the handle to be shaped where I've got a couple spots to grip it. And that's just personal preference. So down here, I'm going to mark where my pinky will fall, leaving myself a little room here at the end. Now I also want to see where my index finger falls, right? which is right about there. So in these spaces, I want a, just a shallow cove. It'll also give me a spot to get a nice grip here and, and hammer with the top of the mallet, which is something I like to do. So you can shape the handle however you'd like. I'll taper it down from about an inch and a half to an inch and a quarter. So I will still apply a slight taper. We'll do a cove here. We may cove this a little deeper here, cove here, and then up here at the top, I'm gonna to leave a little bit of material so that if I'm using it in this fashion, hitting from the top, have some room for the pinky to rest in up here as well. I wanna leave mass up here on this end as long as I can so that it'll help reduce vibration as we're working. So these are just reference lines at this point. Okay, I'm going to start the shape by just giving myself a little cove here. I'm going to round this edge over down here on the end. I'm going to mark the bottom. Okay, and round that over. And we're gonna come back this way with just a cove. I don't wanna eliminate that right there. We're just gonna taper. Kinda of roll into that. 
Now I'm going to taper just a little bit. This is where we will also want to cove, kind of for that index finger. So let's work on that, cutting that in here a little bit. Our first step is just to get down to where our taper is, just like that. I'm lowering the tool rest as the diameter of this gets a little smaller. I'm using my top hand just to kind of dampen the vibration just a little bit. Back to the spindle gouge. This will just give me a little more detail. Not quite as aggressive. A little more of a taper here. And then this is my cove. So right there, I got a little bit of a catch because I didn't have enough of the edge engaged when I started that cut. Luckily that's not too bad and we'll be able to clean it up right here. We're just going to round that edge right there. Overall we're in pretty good shape. I've got that location where I want it. I've got this location where I want it. I've got two different grips. So now I'm just going to round this edge over here and we'll start working on getting this finished up. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. We'll clean this up with a scraper, just kind of get rid of some of these lines and then we're ready to sand. Okay, I'm going to use my round nose scraper just to get rid of some of these tool marks. Okay, now it's time to sand. I'm going to start with 100 grit, and I'll kind of progress through the grits. I'll go up to 150 and then ultimately to 220. I've got the lathe slowed down to about 300 RPMs or so. That way I'm not gunking up my, my sandpaper quite as quickly, and it's a little bit easier to, to manage. If you've got some problem areas, some rough spots, some tool marks still, you can start with 80 grit is usually about the, the lowest grit I start with on turning. Uh, let the lathe do the work, but I'm going to put my respirator on and we'll get this stuff sanded. All right, we're done sanding. So the last thing to do is to part off the, the ends. You could just cut these off with a saw at this point. I'm going to narrow them down a little bit and then we're going to use a little hand saw. Back to 1500 RPMs and all I want to do is work this down a little bit right down here at the bottom. I'm just going to turn that. Okay, so we'll sand each of the ends real quick. And then our mallet's ready. So this last step is completely optional. You can put finish 
on your mallet if you'd like to. I'm just going to put a little shellac on it. I've got a three pound cut of shellac, which is a decent little finishing weight. You can use whatever you'd like. You can use nothing at all. This is a shop tool, by the way. Keep practicing. In our next lesson, we're going to make another tool, this time for your garden, called a dibble or a dibbler. You'll want to make up a, a, a blank like this one, two by two, and about 10 to 12 inches long. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you'll know when lesson five comes out. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next lesson.